My name is Lambros Gavoyanis, and I'm the technical marketing engineer for Multicast, working for mass scale infrastructure group within Cisco. Today, we will consume around 10 minutes to go over a quick look on Tracy technology. Tracy is a Multicast technology innovation, which is a controller based approach to build a tree. The agenda for today consists of the following. We will begin with an introduction to segment routing, explain what it is, and then move over to multicast and how it can benefit by controller-based approach. In order to establish the three seed knowledge, we need to understand segment routing. Segment routing is a technology that uses source routing to forward traffic to the destination. Packet is forwarded from segment to segment based on the information carried in it. This enables segment routing to achieve a stateless IP fabric with uncompromised simplicity and scale, and to deliver a unified end-to-end -end policy aware network infrastructure. Generally, segment routing takes information from the control plane and inserts it inside the packet to simplify the network. The source chooses a path which is encoded within the packet header as an order list of segments. The segment can be an identifier for any type of instruction, such as forwarding or service. We take this identifier and we stick it to the packet as a list of segments. That makes sense in Unicast since we have a single destination, but in Multicast we do not. We have multiple destinations. Let's see things clearly by explaining the process step by step. In the following example, we have the source, the destination, and three routers. We have a Unicast packet that we want to send from source to destination R1. The source sends the packet to router A. The router A determines the path and encodes it into the packet header as an order list of segments. The packet moves along this path, <coughs> which includes B and C, by sequentially following the header. The packet eventually reaches R1. However, this would not work on multicast because at the replication node, if you have two receivers, the segment is ordered and cannot choose one of them. Now that we have established the basic knowledge on segment routing, let's jump on multicast. SR deployment for unicast is orthogonal to multicast. Multicast protocols and technologies can still work such as single certification, PIM, MLDP, RSVP, P. Nothing needs to be changed in regards to Unicast deployment. However, Multicast can be improved and simplified. In order to simplify Multicast delivery, we can leverage existing segment routing solutions and implement new, such as SR point to multipoint policy tree which is Tracid, and that is a centralized solution that can be both static and dynamic. So now it's time to change gears and talk about Tracid, which is a software-defined network controller based approach to build point to multipoint trace in a SR domain. The SR path computation element SRPC acts as controller and with the central knowledge at the SRPC, the tree can be built using constraints. The tree set can be identified by label and S command C or such. The main point is that this is controller driven and this is where our focus is. Now we need to understand what it takes to build a tree using a controller. SRPC is responsible for the following. Learn the topology, know the root and leaves of the tree, compute the tree, know the MPLS labels it can use, and have a 
proper mechanism to program the forwarding state to all the nodes. Let's now see an example to understand how SRPC acts and works. First, SRPC needs to learn the topology. A common mechanism is BGP link state. <coughs> the network is connected to the SRPC by BGP link state and through that the controller can get the link state database from it by using OSPF or ISIS. The next step of the controller is to use any path computation algorithm like the extra to calculate the paths. If a link fails, the controller has to know to recalculate. Second in the list is the discovery of the tree, root and leaves. This can be done statically by the operator or dynamically through a protocol such as BGP auto discovery. With BGP auto discovery, you can automatically let the controller know that you are a receiver for a particular multicast stream. And lastly, since SRPC has all the needed information, it can compute the tree according to different metrics and constraints, such as optimization metrics, IGP, PE delay, or affinity constraints. In a MPLS architecture, labels are platform specific. Each router has its own database of labels that it can advertise to somebody else, but ultimately the allocation of the labels happens on the router itself. We need to make sure that the label allocation is correct. The controller should allocate labels that are not used by routers for a different use. Proper la uh, label management needs to happen to avoid collisions. We can choose between global and dynamic labels. With global labels, we have the same label on each branch of the tree, while with dynamic labels, each one can be different. By the time the controller has all this information, it can program the forwarding state on all the routers in the path of the tree which is done by Path Computation Element Protocol, PSAP, and communicates with the nodes to push that state to them. There are multiple ways to do so, but today we are talking about PSAP, Path Computation Element Protocol. We use PSAP from the controllers to the routers to program the state. And to sum up this, uh, there are two types of tree set, dynamic and static. They differ on the way their root and leaves are defined. Static are usually defined by the operator, while dynamic are dynamically defined by the controller. Thank you.